Hello there, my name is Dan. Welcome to my garden here in Essex, Southeast UK, 20th of March. Beautiful weather today, and at least for today, it feels like spring is here. So today I'm going to be making a video and I'm going to be showing you two crops in which I'm going to be planting out today. The first of which being peas. So regarding the two crops today, peas and broad beans, I've actually made detailed videos on these in the past, of which I will link in the description box below. So if you want more details on how you can grow these wonderful crops, please feel free to check out those videos. But for today, let's get planting out. So here we are, some wonderful pea plants, variety champion of England. So these are a tall climbing pea, very traditional, and I got the seeds from realseeds.co.uk. I really recommend this company, great ethics, great products, great seeds and advice, etc. So here we are. Now, I initially planted them on the 11th of February in cell trays here, as you can see, two per cell of multi-purpose compost, home base brand with nothing else added. So I initially germinated them inside the house on an indoor windowsill. And probably about two weeks or so after that, I took them outside into the polytunnel because I did not want them to get leggy. And there we are. Another reason I germinate them inside is because rodents quite often like to eat pea seeds. And hopefully I don't have rodents inside. Hopefully I don't have rodents outside, but even less do I want them inside. And uh, then I brought them outside so they didn't get leggy. What will happen is if you leave them inside, they'll stretch towards the sun. You'll end up with weak spindly plants, which you really don't want. So going to be planting these now here, up this wigwam, absolutely wonderful, let's go. So peas are great fun to grow and very good tasting as well. They're used to treat constipation in Chinese traditional medicine, been grown for many, many years by humans. The ancient Greeks and the Romans used to eat them and of course they're eaten very much today. You know, uh, mashed potato and peas, we love that, don't we? And pea soup as well. So as well as being very healthy, they are also relatively easy to grow, to be honest, but they do need these supports. So what we'll do is we'll get some out like this. So although these can get up to about 10 feet tall you can actually get dwarf varieties a good dwarf variety is meteor very tightly packed pea pods really good you can also get sugar snap peas where you eat the whole pod as well and a variety I've grown in the past of that is called Jesse so what I'll do is show you how you plant so what you do is you just get your plant like that look and all I do is I make my little hole like this. So regarding soil, they like a fertile but yet well draining soil, but they do like plenty of water as well and they don't like it too hot. So it's generally recommended that peas be grown in the earlier part of the year in a climate such as the UK. They don't like going above about 20, 21 degrees C, about 68 Fahrenheit. So not really the sort of thing you wanna be planting, you know, so that's cropping around summertime late summer when it could be warmer you want them you want them to be cropping relatively early which is a great thing about planting them this early on so here we are i'm going to get this out again another one like this so with regards to depth i generally don't like to have them on the surface that much what i normally do is plant them out a little bit on the deep side just so maybe an inch or so two centimeters something like that where it uh, comes out of the uh, compost from the module and all I do is just literally cover that up like that and uh, that is it with regards to this part of it have a little close-up here so like this look just gonna dig my little hole like this lovely tight module there put that in and I'm gonna cover that up any weeds you got take them out as you go and what you could do, which is generally recommended, especially if you've got birds, which you probably have, which would love to upend these, what you do is you firm the soil round with your fingers, like so. So one of the benefits you can get of planting two per module is if one doesn't germinate, you've still got the other one. And I wouldn't even be averse, to be honest, to putting three seeds in each module. So I've got these ones here where only one seed grew, which is fine. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do one each side. What I wouldn't do is if you, you get a successful two or three germination from a module, I wouldn't bother separating them. I wouldn't wanna risk uh, you know, damaging the roots. I mean, you could try it if you want, but it's not something I would uh, personally put any time or effort in doing. And we go one each side in the case of these, might as well make use 
of the extra space. And of course, once again, like I'm going to do here with this other one, I'm going to put three up this uh, cane here. I'm not particularly against that either. Two, of course, would be ideal with regards to space and nutrient management, etc. But uh, I'm not going to be getting bogged down in these sorts of details. And we can see how this one does as the season progresses with three. And of course, another advantage, once again, you've got of this is if, you know, two of these even get eaten, you've still got one. I've got some more here, got three here. One that's come out of that one and two out of here. So let's put those in. We'll go in here with a three. So actually there's going to be four growing up this, uh, this cane here. And I've gone a little bit deeper with that one as you can hopefully see, maybe two or three inches, six, seven centimeters, something like that. Here in the poly tunnel, now I've got a few more, which I actually, they don't look that great to be honest, because uh, something's had a go at them, which can happen. So when you are, when you have these outside wherever, make sure if you really want to be full proof, if there is such a thing in gardening, that you uh, keep them away from slugs, snails, etc. I had them ones you saw me plant a moment ago in this area here, which of course is harder for snails, slugs to get to than down here on the table, but that's fine. Not gonna, you know, worry too much. But these actually were planted by myself on the 19th of January, same procedure as the ones that I showed you before. And I actually planted them in Koya, now some of these have been bitten off, la -di da That's one good thing about doing more than one sowing, but you can see I've got one there that's gonna plant out, and here as well, so let's put them out. So these are actually planted by myself in coir, like coconut fiber, I used that to germinate these, and that was actually very good as well, it worked. Personally, I prefer the uh, multi-purpose compost, but uh, yeah, I wasn't really at a loss, to be honest, using these. I would probably say that maybe the multi-purpose compost was 10 or 20% better, but uh, it's nice to experiment with uh, certain things. So here we are, nice root there, gonna be putting that in like that. So it's very important you tie your peas up. They are self-climbing, meaning they will climb eventually. They might even climb at this stage, but uh, you really want to help, help them along, at least at this early stage, by putting some string in. So we'll put string on and tie it. Don't do it too tight though, because you can easily damage the stems. But they do put up these little, I hope you can see this, little sort of... Um, grabbers if you want to call them that which will then grab onto the support and give the plant something to climb up with lovely jubbly all tied up so i'm just wrapping this actually with this very handy implement that i've actually found uh, hanging around which is good i do like to acquire things that are useful for gardening and this is a fly net stop flies going into a house and I've noticed there's some really handy little holes in it so I'm going to tie that with the string. This is to keep the birds off. You don't want birds going in there pecking at it and damaging it. What you can also do with something like this, you're going to lightly cover your plants, something like that. Be better to put something inside as well but uh, birds really could cause damage to these so you want to make sure you protect them. It's quite interesting really because it's really easy to do loads of good work in any subject. Gardening is no exception to the rule. Loads of good work and ruin it at the last point, you know, setting up or later on even. You wanna make sure you do as much as you reasonably can to make sure that things don't eat your plants that you don't want to eat them. Just take that extra bit of time because if I came out here and these got damaged, destroyed, eaten, be so frustrating and uh, time is getting later for the sowing of peas. It's generally good in my experience to have sown your peas by or by March time. I reckon you could probably get away with it in April in a climate such as the UK and I wouldn't be averse to anyone, myself included, trying it in May time. But generally you want to make the most of the, uh, the cooler temperatures. <laughs> And now I've said that, we're going to get a cool summer, aren't we, completely? But uh, you're getting the idea. Do what you can to ensure the survival of your plants. So just going to make sure that the stems of the plants are covered. So I'm going to pull my little support down a little bit and I can just keep, keep the uh, net here in situ by using bricks, bits of wood. Just what I've got lying around, really, certainly nothing specific here could use tent pegs if you wanted 
there we are so they can just go like that now the top bit I'm just going to cover here with this net curtain I often use probably this net curtain specifically to be honest for covering up on the cherry tree to stop pigeons etc getting the fruit so yeah I could just do that look and what have we got so I've got the brick there haven't I so I can just put that over this way it still allows the sun through still allows the rain through you don't want to be letting these dry out but at the same time I've made a reasonable effort here to protect these uh, these plants here from destruction by birds you know if anything got them now I'd probably say fair game because uh, they have certainly shown a fair bit of dedication towards their aim so I'm not worried there we are nicely protected and we shall now await our crop I'll probably take this off when they get about half a meter a foot or so tall that way the plants will be more sturdy and be able to withstand an attack a bit easier so here we are back in the wonderful polytunnel now broad beans one of my favorite crops to grow we'll get more into that in a moment so here we are now this is variety aquadulture claudia and this is generally the variety that's recommended for overwintering here in the uk hardy down to about minus 10 degrees c which is about 14 degrees fahrenheit so quite a hardy plant indeed now these are initially planted on the 3rd of february and if i remember correctly i initially germinated them inside same reason as the peas and then brought them out here two or so weeks later and here they are they've turned into some very strong plants now i did actually make another planting on the 11th of February and we have some there so 3rd of February and the 11th and what do we have here we have another one that I also made on the 11th of February so you can see the varying sizes in these cell trays there we are and these ones here these are very small cell trays the plants are doing just fine in these so why do I like growing broad beans so a variety of reasons like peas they help to uh, scratch that itch if you will of us liking to have things overwintering in the garden so these or allotment these you can plant actually around october november time here in the uk in sort of a climate similar to what i've got here which which is usda zone 8b and what they'll do is they'll get to about that size when the temperature drops they the growing slows down a bit with the shorter days as well and they start growing earlier in the spring and some people believe if you do that you can get your crop before the black fly nah whether i believe that or not is a we're not going to go there you know but we've all got our own opinions on that subject another reason is they're very healthy for those who are suffering from parkinson's a very nasty disease indeed they contain something called l-dopa which some people believe may help with those who have parkinson's so you might wish to look into that one also in chinese traditional medicine many of you may be aware we're doing a bit more reading on this sort of subject recently in the chinese traditional medicine they've said to have an effect on dampness in the body very interesting dampness can lead to things such as aches and aches and pains and fatigue you get it made worse by poor diet you know stressful conditions how is the world now etc etc maybe if eating some broad beans could help you with that who knows i'm not an expert i'm very new to the subject i always advise people to do their own reading their own research and make their own decisions good policy to have in gardening and guess what in what else as well in life in general so let's uh, get planting these out so these broad beans are going to be planted out here so these are the ones i planted on the 3rd of february so in they go now like peas fertile but yet well draining grow medium they don't like it too hot either so this time of year is perfect for the planting out planting of broad beans you can plant these now variety aquadulture claudia if you want a smaller variety a variety called the sutton is a good variety the reason that is it doesn't get too high so if you are got a smaller garden or if you are in an exposed location you worry about the wind breaking them etc the sutton could be a good choice so this variety here because it's quite big it could be recommended that you plant it a meter or so three feet apart something like that if you wish for the plant to make its full size potential so that's uh, that's one for you to look into if you wish so all i'm going to do 
let's uh, have a look here we are so we're just going to pop there we are we're just going to pop our plant out like that and in we go again so I mentioned earlier about fertile but yet well draining soil. Now, what I often do, well, what I'm always doing, is making my own compost, which I regularly put, you know, at least a couple of times, at least once a year on the garden. So I've made loads of videos on composting. I'll link a few in the description box below. Always try and return nutrients to the soil if you can. Don't just keep taking. Build that soil over time and uh, your plants will uh, very much thank you for it. So I'm certainly not gonna be agonizing over my spacing here. I'm not necessarily trying to maximize what I'm doing here. I'm just uh, doing what is reasonably my best. So what I'm gonna do is go in about here. That's probably about just over half a meter maybe, but I can just see the goodness in this uh, growing medium here that I've really uh, been working on over time. So we'll have a little uh, close up here. So same distance on average. So we'll, actually we'll go a bit closer. I'm gonna go about a foot. Now as I state, it's not ideal. A good meter for this variety would be good, 3.3 feet, but uh, this is what I'm doing here. So they do generally need support because they can fall over, particularly a smaller variety such as these. So what you could do is you can give them an individual cane like that, that's not improperly, I'm just doing this to demonstrate, and you can tie it to that cane. You can do it now and as it grows, that way it'll stay nicely there. Another thing you can do is something like this. So what you do is you put a cane in, in each corner. You can even keep the one in the middle like that. So you just, I'm just demonstrating this. And you put uh, two more canes in like that. And then of course one in the middle if you wanted. And then you can tie like a rope or a thick string around in order to uh, hold them up. You want to make sure, as I stated, to keep them up because uh, these will flop about, particularly if you get a high wind or you're in an exposed location, but to make sure your plants are secure. So I quite often like to grow my broad beans actually in containers. This is a 30 litre container. I made a video a few years ago on the growing of broad beans in containers. You'll find that in the description box below. Actually, it's my preferred method of growing them is in containers. They seem to do very well. So in here, I've got some lovely compost that uh, someone gave me, which is great. So that's uh, going to go in here like this. Fertile, well draining, usual sort of thing. And I probably won't need to feed this uh, plant as it grows, simply because I'm very confident with the amount of nutrition within this uh, growing medium here. So a nice bit of uh, homemade compost in here. So here we go once again, we're gonna be getting our lovely broad bean plant out. Now this is, can be quite interesting if you do this sort of thing. I had before overwintered a broad bean plant, or broad bean plants in pots, and they have made a good size, particularly if you plant them, you know, like late October, November time to give them that head start, and then you put the uh, pot up against a self-facing wall can be quite uh, entertaining how big you can get a broad bean plant you might want to uh, try that so there we go so you may remember earlier on I mentioned talking a little bit about dampness in the body apparently it can lead to sort of like aches and pains which you know makes sense to me some people complain of more aches and pains etc when the uh, the weather is damp and maybe the eating of broad beans can uh, help you with that, you know, aches and pains anyone? I've certainly got plenty. And maybe if they can be uh, relieved a little bit with the uh, eating of broad beans, something as simple as that, certainly worthy of some sort of, uh, at least looking into in my opinion. So I'm going to sort of uh, stake my plant like this with this here. Now you don't need something anywhere near as big as this. This is just for demonstrative purposes. But uh, once again, with the string, we want to make sure you keep tying your plants up. So obviously in this video, with my incredible small knowledge on the subject of plant nutrition, etc., I'm not trying to diagnose anything or anything like that. I'm merely sort of encouraging people to look a little bit into sort of some of the potential health benefits of eating some homegrown or indeed shop-bought food because sometimes we can lose sight of that. So for example, you know, if you know, the amount of broad beans I'm going to get from here will be negligible compared to the amount that I would want if I was going to be eating them regularly year round. I fully get that. 
but um, you can always buy them and they're still relatively cheap. So the subject of uh, nutrition, homegrown or bought, in my opinion, it really can help to sort of strengthen and augment very much your efforts in gardening because, you know, to feel partly responsible for your own health can be a very good motivation to grow and eat some lovely nutritious food. So pest wise with broad beans, generally at least around here the birds seem to leave them alone, it's not really a, a problem. If it turns out to be a problem you could always consider making something, you know, some net around it to keep the birds off. Black fly, that's a very likely problem that you will end up getting with your broad beans you can consider you know covering them with like the net curtains i showed you earlier something like that something like this a bit of mesh that could be good to uh, cover them up to stop the black fly getting on them now with regards to the black fly ants actually farm black fly so dealing with ants if you see them that's one way of dealing with it but uh, that's the subject for a separate video a very sort of quick easy way of dealing with black fly aphids etc something like this which i've got here this is malfunctioning a little bit at the moment but uh, i might have to fix it or buy a new one but what you can actually do is squirt them off like this so i've actually made a detailed video on that some people say doing that's a waste of time because the ants then pick them up and put them back on the plants i'll let you uh, sort that one out for yourself and check that video out which will be in the description box below so anything you've seen me plant today, you don't want to let it dry out. Keep it moist, full sun if possible for your broad beans, peas, a good six to eight hours of sun if you can. If you can't, do the best you've got, at least four hours if possible for both. But yeah, expecting you to uh, do very well with all of these. Check out those videos I've linked below and uh, comments, questions, whatever, please feel free to post those below. I hope you're all doing well out there and um, I look forward to seeing you all in work in the next video. Thank you for your time.